Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to check out the conclusion of my story about my 1994 summer. Now during this summer I was following the Norba National Mountain Bike Series. The first stop was in Georgia. That race was canceled by a fierce rain and lightning storm. Then I drove up to Detroit, where I'm from, and on up to Traverse City, Michigan for stop number two of the Norba National Series. I was a roving reporter that summer. And it was kind of interesting for the people at Durango to read about what some of their local mountain bike heroes were doing week to week around the country. And I was there to capture it all. After that race in Traverse City, I jumped in my truck with Martin Stenger, one of the slingshot cross country pros from way back. And we drove on a sweltering hot day all the way from Detroit up to Mount Snow, Vermont. During that drive, it was pretty crazy. There was three separate semi trucks that lost their treads in front of us and these gigantic tire treads flew up in the air and almost hit our truck. At stop number three in Mount Snow, Vermont, I ran into Floyd again. He asked me if I could pick him up from the airport in Reno, Nevada about three weeks later. And from there, we could drive to Mammoth Mountain, California. It was important to get there early to get used to the altitude. I headed back out west. I remember staying in Denver for a couple nights I bought a small bag of weed from my friend. It was definitely the first time Floyd Landis had ever been exposed to marijuana, and I don't even think he knew what it was. I bring that up because Floyd is now in the cannabis business, and Floyd got a great brand off the ground called Floyd's of Leadville, and they started out making CBD products. Their tagline is relax and recover, which I think is brilliant. They market their stuff to a lot of bike stores and you know health and fitness places. Now he's got another line called Floyd's Fine Cannabis, and that's a little bit more on the THC side of things. So when I picked Floyd up at the airport in Reno, we just started having a good old time. You know, we were driving along out through the desert. We found a campground in Mammoth, and it was pretty much dominated by gigantic RVs. We were there for 13 nights. Every single night, we slept out under the stars, no tent. Never saw a cloud the whole time. It was like 80 degrees steady. It was nice and cool at night. All we had was a couple raccoons come by every now and then. One person would sleep on the picnic table. One person would sleep in the back of my pickup truck. We were always talking about John Tomac. We were always talking about Lance Armstrong. Just imagining what it would be like to be in the Tour de France. Most of these 13 days we spent at this campground, literally, we were sitting in these folding chairs next to the fire pit, had these folding chairs. You know, Floyd Landis is an exceptional wheelie rider with a profound sense of balance. And he could tilt a folding chair back on one leg like that, and he could sit there and balance on it indefinitely. Like read a book, like balancing like that. Like the wheelies and stuff you could ride. I didn't, I've been practicing wheelies my entire life and I still suck at them. It just seemed like he had a different thing about him. Sometimes you just see that look in certain people's eyes where it's like, it's just like a certain kind of intensity with something. The terrain in Mammoth is so cool because it's these, it's, it's like mineralized volcanic foam, pumice. It's what they put in exfoliating products. So these little pumice rocks are like cocoa puffs. And when you're going really fast on it, it's like you're floating. It's really cool, a really weird landscape. There's like no trees up on top of Mammoth Mountain. It's just a beautiful part of California. So Floyd did the senior expert race and he got sixth place, which was really good actually, considering the fact that he came from Pennsylvania. So after the race, we were all set to drive up to Spokane, Washington for the next stop. We also had been hanging out with a couple guys from Michigan who had this t-shirt company and the t-shirt said, show them your nuts. Like, show them that you're crazy. Show them your nuts. I never really even got that meaning from the get-go. I always thought it was a lewd thing, just like, hey, show them your balls. I, I did not understand how this t-shirt was taking off, but they had a huge truck of these t-shirts. They were driving to all the Norba races selling these show them your nuts t-shirts. These dudes were crazy. They were, they were wild. It was the last night we were there in Mammoth. We were totally sick of camping. We needed showers and stuff. And we met these massage therapist ladies. They were really cool. So it was these two guys and me and Floyd, and we go over to the home of one of these massage therapists. They made all this pizza for us from scratch and everything. And then they were like, hey, we know some hot springs way out in the desert. We should go out there. Absolutely, why wouldn't you? Floyd was like, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go back to camp. Like, all right. 
me and the two show em your nuts guys and like these three awesome hot looking massage therapists drove way out in the desert in the middle of nowhere there was this little pool it was like a hundred degree water bubble out of there you know some little stone benches have been built in there it was real nice it was a good time fun time we got up the next day and the plan was to drive to Spokane and Floyd, I think, was just like a little bit, this kind of goes along with what I was just saying, you know, certain people that are focused on stuff, they don't really want to hang out with people that are like, you know, smoking weed and taking off into the desert, being hot springs under the stars and do a bunch of hippie shit, you know? They're more like, okay, I need to surround myself with some people more aligned with my goals. He was riding for GT at the time, so that morning he's like, hey, you guys, uh, I got a different ride up to Spokane. I'm going with the GT guys. We're replacing Floyd in my passenger seat for the trip up to Spokane was a downhiller named Andrew Juskaitis, who was actually, had been one of my teammates for Slingshot. Then riding along with us was the legendary Chris Fox. A guy who pretty much deserves an entire episode to himself and I'll probably work one up about Chris Fox but from down here we go up here we were going like 90 miles an hour we hit a jackrabbit that was like this tall and then we get into Oregon cruising along here we got one of these Oregon state rollers coming the opposite direction hits the flashers but there was like a couple trucks behind us and stuff and there was a lot of terrain you know so I just hit the gas because we knew that this guy had to turn around and pass all these cars. We get like a couple miles away from this cop and I turn left onto like a forest service road, coming really hot into this corner. We skid off the road and fly into the ditch and I blow out the front right tire. But like I'm able to sort of like straighten out the truck a little bit and then make it look like I just parked on the shoulder. So when the cop rolls up, I think he let us off with a warning but he didn't realize I was actually trying to outrun him. And I wrote some pretty funny stringers for the Heralds about that whole trip. We get up there and all the hotels were sold out outside of Spokane where we were staying. One night we ended up sleeping underneath a team support like semi truck. Other few nights we slept in the back of a gigantic box van, another team support vehicle. So that was just an out and back up to Spokane. So I came back down. I ended up back in Durango for the fall semester. And I still had the columnist job for the Durango Herald. So, so I drove up to Vail for the World Championships in mid-September, and that was pretty cool. Thanks a lot for checking out this story about me and Floyd Landis and the second half of my summer of 1994 road trip. Best summer of my life.